Hi gang. Today we're going to cover the music gizmo. Um, it's an episode I've been wanting to do for a while and um, hopefully you're going to find it useful. i got my co-host with me today, Magellan Chivas. He's two, he's uh, almost 12, in case you're wondering, and they're definitely going to get into things. All right, so I need music when I arrive. And um, the very first thing that we should cover is being able to hear the music. We're done. <laughs> Little butt shot for everybody. It's his favorite thing to do. Um, wind noise is kind of a problem. So what I want to point out are these little things here, which I have on all of my helmets. Um, they're called cat ears. And basically they're a furry material that helps to uh, dampen the wind. They just go on like that. But uh, they sit next to your ears and they, uh, they interrupt the airflow and the air noise. And they are really good. Uh, though they look a little bit like Elvis sideburns. And I've got those also in, in my full face as well. Uh, just to give you an idea. So that's the very first thing I'm going to say is if you want to be able to hear the music in the wind, then um, those are pretty good. They're not they're not a miracle, but they're better than than you think and pretty good um, The next option I'm going to talk about is being able to hear your surroundings so um, bone conducting earphones Don't go in your ears, but they go on on the bone and They conduct the sound to your bone which still allows your ear canal to be used for uh, sound so you get to combine the sounds and you have full awareness and these are the uh, the aftershocks titanium air and they are fantastic um, they also have Siri and Google assistant controls uh, for your music what have you um, they go straight onto your ears like this and they work well with a half helmet is what I would say but if you go to a full helmet yeah, you can't use them right um, a year and a half later, two years later, they came out, the same company, with their calling OptiShocks, which are a pair of uh, sunglasses and the bone conducting ears. And this time, they, they click onto the back of your ears. And so they vibrate the sound through the back of your ears to your, to your, um, <laughs> your eardrum. And... Um, and that works. These are a little hard to snap in place of the full place, but you can do it and they work very well. The downside is that you have to have the sunglasses on even if you don't want the sunglasses. They do make changes in the lens, but uh, just be aware that in cases where you want to be able to take your sunglasses on and off, say you're going through a bunch of shade or what have you, it's not going to happen that way. Um, at high volumes, both of these vibrate quite a bit and it tickles. Um, so. Be aware of that but they both allow full awareness next out is uh, this thing that just came on sale it's a Bose uh, sound companion and it goes around uh, your neck and the speakers blast up and this is pretty good too um, the speakers are close to your your ears so you don't have to have the volume very loud it's kind of a personal sound space I guess is what they're calling it um, and it works pretty well. I'm going to say the outside awareness for me is not as great as it is with these two. Um, but uh, it's still very good. It's just I feel these two are a little bit higher caliber. The downside on this one is that if you live in a hot environment like I do, um, this is going to go around your neck and it's going to be hot. Um, also, if you fall or uh, I should say take an unplanned dismount of any kind, um, you're probably going to have to go looking for these because there's nothing holding them on except for gravity. Um, so uh, they work pretty well. They also Siri and Google integrated. Uh, and they're on sale right now for 150 bucks from their usual 300 um, And they work with every helmet. So that's a plus too. And they don't tickle when they're, they're doing noise. Um, Clearly you have the speaker and the wheel as an option, but as probably many of you discovered, that is not very loud, especially against the wind noise. And I tend to use the UE Boom. Um, so I strap it onto my backpack here, 
uh, use a little a little clip and um, just a, a band to hold it in place. And I also happen to have some LEDs on my backpack for night. And this has a speaker in it so that when sound comes out, the backpack lights up. Yeah, boom! And you can see it reacts by sound. You can set the color. And so that's kind of fun. Now, for controlling these things, um, I use my chubby buttons. So these guys are water resistant uh, Bluetooth buttons and media controls. Um, they allow you to, to turn music on and off by pressing the play button. Um, you can go forward, you can go backward. You can also use it for taking pictures um, because they are the volume buttons on your phone. And that's good. Um, as long as you got the music set up ahead of time. So this connects to my my iPhone, my iPhone is Bluetooth to whatever speaker I happen to be using, whether it's the wheel, the boom, or one of these other ones. Um, and so that's good. And you know, obviously if you have an Apple system, you can also use the Apple Watch to control the volumes and things so they a little harder to speak. But you can use it to to say, hey, play this song. <laughs> Jesus. Um, and you know, so when you raise it up, I wear it back here on my forearm. And so if you don't have something that has Siri commands, for example, the UE boom, then raising it up and saying, hey, Siri, um, will trigger it and you can then give it commands to play particular music. If you don't want to do that for whatever reason, um, I'm going to point out this click button. So this was a Kickstarter a couple years ago. They saw it directly off their, uh, their page. They're now onto version two. And basically it's a Bluetooth button. Um, and you can press it once, twice, uh, double click, or a uh, hold down and have it for, for various things. So I've got it set for one click to play motorcycle noises, two clicks to play revving. Um, so this one. And then a long press and hold to play my, my float playlist. Um, and so I can switch back and forth between my kind of my sound gags and my music uh, by using the button, which I then place inside of my wrist mirror. So, uh, and you can easily put two of them on here if you wanted to. Version two, I'm going to hope is better for Spotify. Uh, this one's well integrated for Apple Music. Uh, I can't speak to the other things because I haven't tried it, but not so good on Spotify. Um, but version two, they've just come out with, they're promising um, an open system that should work much better. So that's how you control the music um, without being dangerous, uh, both for volume and song and what have you, and for playlist. And then there's some various methods of, of actually playing the music, um, uh, all of which are intended to give you outside awareness and keep you safe. Uh, and I always recommend writing with music like a, uh, a UE boom just because it allows people to hear you when you're coming up behind them, um, which I find to be very, very helpful. Of course, combining that with passing on your left or, you know, uh, that kind of thing, also very, very useful. But at least uh, for those people who can hear you, because um, not everyone can, and some people are in earbuds or whatever, the music certainly helps that. And um, why wouldn't you have music? Music is a wonderful thing. So, um, Hopefully quick and simple and useful to you. If I'm going to rank them in order of preference, um, in terms of ease of use, the wheel speakers are obviously the easiest. You have them with you, you don't have to charge it, except when you charge a wheel. So that's fantastic. Um, after that, I love these, but they don't work well with the full face helmet. And there's definitely times you want a full face helmet. Uh, these I want to love but I got them off of the, the Kickstarter campaign when they, they launched it, um, thinking it was going to be better. I'm going to say they're okay, but probably pass on them. Um, these are pretty good, except for the fact that you're going to sweat and they get hot around your neck. If you live in a cooler climate, that's great. This is sweat proof. Um, not terrible, but, um, you know, for me, the UE boom has got the best sound quality. Um, 
it also allows me to take foam calls on it and it's got the volume up and volume down buttons right here uh, which is very convenient for what I'm doing and I can just clip this onto my belt I don't have to have this on the backpack um, so most of the time if it's just out personal riding or what have you I'll just clip this onto my belt and and go because uh, the sound is so much better than uh, on the EUC wheel uh, so much louder and it has a mode called Party Up, where if other people have UE booms, um, you can connect a bunch of them together, and um, you end up with this encompassing sound as you're riding in the group, because everyone's speaker is producing it. Uh, it's not so much stereo as it is being surrounded by, by sound in a very unique way. Um, it's not quite the same as having speakers all around your house. <laughs> it's, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, because everyone's moving and there's this, these Doppler effects. It's, it's very, very cool. And so we do our group rides. Uh, we party up on that, and that's wonderful. This is a UE Boom 2. There's a couple of different models. The version 3 has a button here that allows you to do playlists. But what you give up for that is uh, the microphone control for um, like the speakerphone and such. So I prefer the 2. It's a little bit cheaper. Um, this is my own personal preference, especially since I have another button to trigger the, the, the playlists. Um, somehow I've managed to take a short video and make it a long rambling one. Anyway, happy ride and hope you guys have a good time.